What's going on guys? Hope you're all doing well. Now for today's video, I wanted to talk about a horror movie from 1994 that changed slashers in a pretty big way that often only gets attributed to a film that came out a couple years later, which is Scream. Now just so you guys know ahead of time, this was actually recorded back in April of 2022 and it's almost a year old now. Don't blame me for it not coming out though because Tony just takes a really long time to do his Nightmare on Elm Street reviews. Anyways, Wes Craven's New Nightmare released in 1994. Many people agree that it's pretty much a really, really good precursor to Scream. A lot of people like it, but it wasn't a giant hit. What do you think about it, Tony? I'm not Tony. I'm Freddy Krueger. This is how I talk. And you're having a nightmare. <laughs> So what do you think about Wes Craven's New Nightmare, honestly? So when I first saw New Nightmare, yeah. uh, it was when I was getting into all these big franchises. I think my friend Anthony rented it. I didn't really like it at first. Mm -hmm. It was a little too different than what I was expecting. Right. Um, I didn't. I wasn't ready for that type of meta movie yet. Like that type of like, oh, it's, it's a very different sequel to all the other ones. Yeah, it's like, oh, the, the, the movies exist in the fake world and this is the real world where these are movies. Other movies have done it. I've learned to appreciate. I like that. I like other movies doing that. Um, but yeah, I thought it was like a little weird. I'm like, why? It's not continuing the story. Well, and, Freddy died. Well, yeah, Freddy did six. die. Yeah. Uh, I don't like his glove. What's up with the jacket? And it's not even Freddy. It's a demon. Right, right. I don't like that. He just turns into a devil at the end. That was dumb. Uh, that is weird. It's like, like a heavy I, metal music video. Like, I know it's him revealing yeah. his true form, but it's just like a, like a generic devil. Mm. Um, yeah, so I wasn't super into it at first. And then over the years, I've rewatched it multiple times. Yeah. And yes, it's become one of my favorite. I Nightmare agree. Movies. I completely yeah. agree. I Well, I actually never hated it. I thought when, it, uh, when I first saw this movie... Yeah. Um, I was getting a little depressed over the fact that I was really into the first Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah. I, I thought Freddy's Revenge was pretty good. I love Freddy's and Revenge. Everybody... And I, um, I did a video on it mm -hmm. about how I think it's the best, and YouTube took it down, but on Odyssey, we did Wishmaster 2. Why did YouTube take it down? Um, Wishmaster 2 episode, I interviewed the director of Wishmaster 2, who did Freddy's Revenge. Okay. Uh, but YouTube took it down. There was a copyright thing. Oh, so, that's But it's on Odyssey. Right. And I got to talk to the director of part two, and I'm like, yeah, this movie's great. Yeah, what'd he say? Oh, he loved it. Yeah, he's, yeah. he appreciated it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm glad people have come around on two. Yeah, my mom always talks about that one, because she talk, yeah. She was like actually watching these as they came out, yeah. like in high school, and she's yeah. like, yeah, Freddy's, th that's the one with the bus, right? And I'm like, yeah, yes. yeah okay. Uh, Dream Warriors is great. Yeah, people like Dream Warriors. I like the Dream Master. The Dream Master's yeah. done by Rennie Harland, who went on to I do was... like Deep Blue Sea. Yeah, I wasn't super into Dream Master. Master. Okay, wasn't into Dream Child. No, the Dream Child has amazing visuals. And Stephen Hopkins did it, Predator 2 guy. Yes. And, and I think, the Ghost in the Darkness. And I think it has a good story, and I keep saying, like, ironically, the worst thing in Nightmare 5 is Freddy himself. His comedy is just not yeah, landing, yeah. and it's real out of place with the rest of the film. Yeah, and I also feel like the problems that started with, like, some of 4, definitely a lot of 5, mm. Freddy's Dead is like a Looney Tune. Yeah, Freddy's Dead I like. I don't like Freddy's Dead. I like Freddy's Dead. Um, I don't like Alice Cooper is like Freddy's abusive dad no, like or it. whatever. I like how they go into his origin and stuff. I like Rachel Talley directing it. She mm -hmm. did Tank Girl. We uh, talked okay. about Tank Girl recently. I don't know. I have a small spot for Freddy's Dead because it knew it was the last one. It's what? Freddy. This si came out three years later. But at the time, they thought right. it was the last one. It's Freddy Six. Like she knew no one had was a cool it, poster. Yeah, she knew had no a cool one was poster. taking it seriously yeah. anymore. So they had a lot of fun. There's a bunch of weird cameos from like Roseanne, Tom Arnold. Oh my god, Johnny there Depp. were in that movie. That yeah. was weird. Uh, but yeah, Freddy's Dead is fun. But yeah, this one it really is solid. This one, I think might. It's hard. Judge the first one I think is the best. This one's close, man. Mm. This one's a good scary movie, and I also really like the fact that Wes Craven came back and did what he wanted to do. Yeah. There's so many iconic scenes in this movie that jump out at me as like, that's Wes Craven's take on like horror and Freddy Krueger. Yeah. The claws picking up uh, Heather Langenkamp's son like yeah. while the cars are going on the overpass. Yeah, that was cool. I uh, liked... Um I like when the claw just like comes to life and kills all on the those special guys. effects set. And yeah, it's like, yeah. Uh, I also like how it kills her husband while he's yeah. driving uh, home and he falls asleep. Uh, Heather Langenkamp is incredible in this movie. Yes, she's really good. She's yeah, really. She good. became like a, an effects person. 
she married an effects person. Yeah, she? but she did effects with him. Oh, she, I didn't know that. Yeah, because yeah. I, I remember when we did uh, the Dawn of the Dead 2004. I think she helped do some, did some of the effects. I, for that. that is fucking cool. She, she doesn't really act in many things these days. Oh God, you know what the last movie I saw her act in was? She has a cameo in Hellraiser Judgment. Was that a bad movie? Yeah, that was an awful movie. Oh, really? Yeah. I'm not. I'm not that well versed in Hellraiser. I like no. one and two and five. I'm an apologist like for the first five. And it's all even four. Yeah, I like four. Okay, four. Four got a little screwed up in editing, but I enjoy four. All right, I don't hate. I don't yeah. hate those movies. But, I don't, yeah. I've never seen six, seven, eight, nine, or what is Judgment Ten? <sighs> that might be nine. I think there was only nine. Revelations wasn't that another one? Oh God. Anyway, all New right. Nightmare. Right. Uh, <laughs> don't remember these. Don't mind these bad movies. Right. New Nightmare. Uh, yeah, Heather Langenkamp's really good in it. Yeah. Uh, and it was cool to see her back. She had died in part three. Um, yeah. <laughs> her son, who's in it, who's in uh, was in Spawn and a bunch of other movies. I like how he's got the pet, uh, or not pet, but the the stuffed animal T Rex. Because oh, this right. was around the time Jurassic Park was yeah. really big, and it's like. I love the scene too, where he's like waking up, and she's like, "What happened to Rex?" And he's got the slashes on him. She's like, right. Rex was defending me from Freddy Krueger. Yeah. And I, I wish we got like a dream sequence where you see like the Jurassic Park T Rex fighting <laughs> like Freddy Krueger, because that would have been uh, fucking yeah. awesome. But like, I do really like this. This movie feels very 1994. Yes. It's got the earthquake stuff in the L.A. and like the big slashes on the wall. Yeah. Uh, it. I really like the babysitter in this movie. It actually reminded me of a babysitter I had at the time. Yeah, yeah, I like um, babysitter. Uh, I, I think that the kill that Freddy goes with the babysitter is awesome. And that I was pretty awesome. And he, they brought back funny Freddy that's still scary. Yes, I do like when he jumps out of the closet, like, miss me. Yeah, yeah. Well, I also <laughs> like how he's like, uh, ever play skin the cat yeah. and he's like dragging her on the thing so freddie had been funny for a while but he'd lost his his sense of scare yes. like thing this movie brought it back i love the look with the the yeah they really updated jacket. his look i mean he does look like classic freddie in it mm. but they gave him the bone claw yeah uh and then yeah they gave him like the the big jacket and yeah. i thought that was the jacket's really cool. really cool yeah yeah i i think in I general the, the dvd set uh the the cover for the first dvd set was mostly him in the jacket yeah oh yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 he was i do also like uh there are little easter eggs and nuggets of information in this movie mm. that you really you if you're not paying attention you, and if you're not your fan you won't know about it but that part where they're on the talk show yeah and that slow motion he's like you are all my children now yeah. like oh fine you know like of the Nightmare on Elm Street 2 where he's yes. like at the pool party but uh so I, what, what, what was the backstory are they making like a new Freddy movie or Freddy was been dead Wes Craven's writing a new right. movie and Robert England's painting it and they're having these nightmares yes. and stuff because the earthquake I think we're led to believe has released a demon well well really it's the this is actually a fascinating movie that I wouldn't be shocked if people that are like really into uh Judeo-Christian like yeah. what happens when the story dies the evil is set free. Now that the films have ended, the genie's out of the bottle. And the way they go about it is it's haunting the filmmakers, even Bob Shea at New Line Cinema. Yes, like, yeah. And I like the fact that this movie is scary, original, and the plot is like they're trying to convince Heather Langenkamp to come back to do Nightmare 7. Yeah. And Wes Craven's working on it. Yeah. And I don't personally believe that anybody that created a nightmare on elm street unleashed a demon but like i i thought it was just like the demon is taking the persona of like yeah it's almost using it's the using horror the movie Freddy persona because that's like the way scariest to, thing i guess it's a way to enter the our world yeah. it's a bad dream what are you doing out of bed rex woke me up he was fighting and by the way, the special effects and stuff that they actually do when they go to hell or whatever it is. Yeah, they have a little bit in the back. Like, look at this awesome Freddy face. Yeah. That is cool. There's a lot of stuff. And by the way, the again, another scream sort of thing. is. The, yes, the, when he yeah, tries to eat her. Yeah. I want to say, hold on. That's not what his glove looks like. No, that's like the Terminator. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but they show you the glove on this one. Don't miss me. Obviously, first and foremost, in my opinion, it made Freddy scary again. Yes. And it did original things. John Saxon comes back. Yes, he does. In a pretty cool role. I love the whole end of the movie can kind of be like 
in the Nightmare on Elm Street universe. <laughs> like, yeah, well, it's, it is really trippy. Yeah. I like how trippy it is. It's like, again, all the Freddy Kruegers like in the sky and everything, and they've got the whole. But there's like this is like the army of Freddies running up. <laughs> they've got the poor. Uh, there's nothing really wrong with her, but the doctor that's you know just trying to calm down Heather Langenkamp. And yeah. there's a great dream sequence where like gotta cut this evil out of this child. And, like, <laughs> there's some great shit going on here. Yeah. Uh, even special effects wise, I think they used a little bit of CG for like when the glove is coming out of the seat in the Maybe. car. Maybe I'd have to, yeah, I'd have to look at it closely um, again. But there's a lot of stuff in this movie that I actually gravitate towards, and like, I, also another really cool thing: this movie dives into the real life relationships and personal lives that these actors go through. Yes. There's some freak calling Heather Langenkamp, yeah, and like harassing her, pretending to be Freddie and shit. Yeah. This is a really there, cool movie. And I like how like, Freddy is, like, <clears throat> manipulating the kid. It, like, tries to make him, like, jump off the Oh, the yeah, he's trying stuff. to get closer to God. And then, like, the uh, yeah, yeah. the funeral. The funeral is great. When she goes in the casket, it's, like, this giant casket. Yeah. <laughs> that was cool. There's a lot in this movie that I think... I, I definitely see how he went from this mm. to Scream. Yes. Mm. And uh, Scream, I really love the Scream movies. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. I've reviewed the first one and the new one. I've got a friend, Sam Phillips. He does the Journeyman tr channel. We do yeah. commentaries for Scream and Scream 2. He's really okay. trying to get me to come back to do Scream 3, and I'm sorry. I will eventually, but Scream 3 sucks. <laughs> like Scream 3. There's good moments in Scream I love 3. 4, and uh, everybody, you, you said the fifth one's great, too. So. I really like what they did with the fifth one. So did he. He said it's yeah. really good. So yeah. I got to check that I out. I think I, I'm interested to see what you think about the I, fifth I one. I think I like it. Why? Why do you? Why do you? Out of curiosity, it's kind of make fun of uh, Last Jedi haters, uh, but oh, in a clever okay. way. In a clever way. Uh, that's fine. Not an annoying. I way. I never said everything in that <laughs> movie was bad. No, no, but like uh, the, it plays on like how fans reacted to that film. Okay. But yeah, okay. it's really clever how they did um, it. Love Scream Four. Yes. Wes Craven's New Nightmare. You can totally see how he jumped from that. To scream. to scream, yes. And I think the interesting thing, you talk about meta and like mm. the movie got really into breaking the fourth wall. I think it breaks the fourth wall, but it does so in a way that's actually, it's not like a Deadpool thing. Like, no, no, not like that. When I didn't Freddy, mean like that. Yeah, I know. I know what you meant. But like, yeah. if you haven't seen this movie, like the part where Freddy actually enters the real world, like mm. when he comes out of the closet. Yeah. It's scary. Like, I like the part where he comes out of the sheet and he like cuts yeah. it and he like reveals himself. And I think it's because the movie bills itself as a very typical modern life. This is the 90s. Mm. This is like just casual everyday life. And then to see this thing that people have created, yeah. this just this horror monster creature icon slasher yeah. villain interact with the real world. It grounded the Nightmare on Elm Street series mm. back to where it had like it hadn't felt that scary yeah. in a long time. And it reminds me of um in the Mouth of Madness how like everyone believes that guy's story so they start to like enter into the real world. Yeah. It's similar it's a similar thing but this like if it was a slasher. And that movie it's like if Stephen King was god. This right, is like sure. if is Wes Craven like influenced the demon. I, I wish they followed this movie up with a real Nightmare on Elm Street 7 that Wes Craven directed. And, oh, that would have been cool. And it was based on what's in this. Yeah. I think that would have been very fun. But, I, it's always funny when you see those movie within movies and you kind of want to see what that movie looks yeah, like. Yeah, yeah. Like, or like, um, uh, what's the Arnold Schwarzenegger movie in The Lost World? Oh, King Lear? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I remember you see that sometimes. And there's there's times where they've attempted it. Like, I know in Glorious Bastards, the... Uh, the Nazi sniper movie. They actually, oh, yeah, yeah, they yeah. made like, a, but it's a short film. It's mm. not like a feature length. Um, but I'm thinking of like a, the night the reindeer died. Kirby enthusiasm yeah. season seven, okay. the Seinfeld reunion season. Everything I saw from the Seinfeld episode they were making, I'm like, I kind of like this. I want, and people have cut clips together, but like, I kind of want to see that full episode uninterrupted. Yeah, and this movie's definitely like that. Where yeah. I, I really, I enjoyed the film so much that, mm. again, like I said, I was getting disappointed because I was going yeah. through all these horror movie franchises. Mm. I like Friday the 13th, but I was getting yeah. towards the end of that series and I was like, oh. Well, Friday the 13th was never great from the get-go. No, but it was, for what it was, yeah. I could see the fan appeal. Halloween, by the time you get to six, yeah. and then by the time you get to resurrection. Yeah, oh God, yeah. So, like, when I got through Nightmare, I was like, oh, wow, this is great. It's great. Yeah, this is really fun and really yeah. cool. Um, unfortunately, 
I don't hear a lot of people talking about this movie anymore, and I I I don't yeah, know I, why. It was kind of the tail end of like the, the slasher, slasher series. genre. Uh, because after this, it was the very first episode of uh, the modern version of my show. Uh, he produces Wishmaster, mm-hmm. which would have totally fit in with all these guys like 10 years prior, but it just it came out too late. Well, don't forget, yeah. at this time also, we're getting Jason Goes to Hell, the final Friday. Yes. And we're getting... Bad. And they tried to do... Um, Halloween, the Curse of Michael Myers. and the cur- the, m- Halloween. Like they cu- A few years later, they get uh, H2O, which did really well. Yeah, H2O was great. Yeah. But then they couldn't capitalize on that. Really. No, they had to uh, But basically, up. Scream kind of came and was like, the only thing we can really do with slashers is just kind of make fun of the tropes and re- try to redefine the genre. Ironically, Halloween H2O, I feel like, kind of borrowed more from Scream. It did. Than well, it-, it had the same writer. Mm. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I think it just came out a little too late. And one of the reasons they might have uh, said it in the real world is because they didn't want to interfere with Freddy versus Jason because they were still planning that's, on making that's that. That's right. Yeah. Freddy, uh, Jason goes to hell, sets it up, and then they do this instead because I guess they couldn't land on like a script for Freddy versus Jason. That's a big movie that the studio wanted to do for a decade. And for whatever reason, they like they it was weird that like, they got Jason and killed him right away. But I think it was to send him to hell to meet Freddy. Yeah, and I think that's why they. I think I, that's also why they killed Freddy. Remember, they also acquired the Texas Chainsaw Massacre license. New Line did. Yeah, so they, they were they, probably they planning. Were bad. I like Leatherface. No. Texas Chainsaw Massacre three. Bad. I, I, I like, didn't say it was good. I like the scene where Ken Forey shoots everyone. Yeah. Like, I have the director's cut. Leatherface also, gets the in the fucking car and starts jamming on Megadeth and like. Drives yeah. I was gonna say I have the director's cut of that. Also. I think I've seen the director's cut. Yes, yeah. um, but no. Uh, Here's a movie that I think this movie was influenced by. Right. I mean, it's a very random one, but I, you might agree with me. Came out a year before this did. Last yeah. Action Hero. Yes, which yeah. I've also reviewed. Yeah. Um, yes, I could see a lot of similar similarities there. Uh, this is a little more consistent with whatever rules it's trying to. The Last Action Hero. We talked about it in my review. I'm like. That's a meta comedy. This is yeah, still horror. But I was just like, all right, did the kid get sucked into the movie or movie world? Why is there a cartoon cat? Like they, they got a little carried away. Yeah, with yeah, yeah. I agree. Um, but yeah, there are some things because don't they lock him in a furnace at the end and kill him? Yeah. But like immediately before that, we see that he can replicate himself and teleport. And every time I watch this, I'm like, teleport out. I think yeah. I I yeah. think the ending of the movie where they kill the demon yeah. and where it shows the the devil yeah the it. stop and it's like stop motion which in 1994 is like we just saw jurassic park they're dude. like like, like it's, <laughs> it's it'll be easier to do stop motion we don't have enough money for the cgi but when they get out of yeah. the dream world or hell or whatever yeah. i do also like the fact that she has to go down with uh they reference uh hansel and gretel yeah uh, by going down the thing um she i think when she gets back up she gets the script right i think so yeah yeah, yeah. I really like this movie. Yes. I, I, I can't fathom. I know there are people that support this one, but un, and it, it's not as crazy as like Hulk 2003 where you don't see a lot of people come out. And be yeah. like, oh. But this movie. I think Nightmare fans really like this one. But but I think more average. Like if you like Scream, you need to see this movie. Yeah. If you like slasher movies or horror movies, and if you like movies in general, yeah. you should check this one out because this is a very unique like example of a slasher craze coming to an end Mm. and then this gets this is a stepping stone in between yeah you've got your you get what i'm saying right and it was a good way to get freddy back out there and establish him as scary if they were gonna do freddy versus jason and which they did they did like but like 10 years after took a while yeah Yeah. but I, i really think wes craven's new nightmare is one of the most underrated even though i know people even roger ebert i think likes this movie yeah so yeah, it, no, good. I, I still think it's underrated because nobody fucking talks about it yeah it just it probably just came out an awkward time where there was just too much going on i bet you there's loads of people that don't even know what <clears throat> this is well i mean like how many people outside of like halloween fans how many people fucking remember halloween six or five or five yeah like what else? Can, yeah, the, uh, Nightmare or uh, Texas Chainsaw: The Next Generation, which I love, but no one. Knows. I don't know the last couple Texas. That Chainsaw movie Master sat on a shelf and then was released to 
a thunderous just clap. <laughs> Although that movie is great, especially the director's cut. I've I really never seen the fourth I appreciate. Texas I feel like that's a movie you would hate, and you'd be like, "Of course, Tony likes this stupid shit." I might like uh, it. I don't. You, know. you might like it. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's just it was not the era to put slap. It, the studio should have did Freddy vs. Jason instead if they wanted to make money. That's the one that you probably could have got people to come out. And oh see. yeah, I do think though that horror at this point in time the 80s was over and people were moving away yeah. from slashers yeah and they're moving more towards at this point in time horror adjacent things like jurassic yeah. park this the the true slashers that i think people were actually interested in were like predator 2 yeah and then on top of that you had the more animal attack oriented things or the yeah. more monster like relic or you, or uh, even like you just like horror you had like these cool crime you have like silence of the lambs silence of the lambs point. which was like a huge giant yeah thing. and like, you're getting a lot there's a lot more competition these days like at that point yeah, yeah there was just for the general audience, they probably were more interested in these newer things. It's the opposite of now. Yeah. Where now it's They're like, like bring back the old franchise. Yeah, it, for yeah. now, it, yeah. Now it's like, uh, like look, I'll go see Thor four, but I've seen eight Thor movies. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, I well, what's Guardians of the Galaxy um, Volume like, Four? Like, three. wait, what is, what is this movie? It's called The Northmen. It's about Norse people. But I'm like, I see that instead. I want to see that. Um, yeah. like I remember a few years ago, like I Spider Man Far From Home came out. It's a good movie. I like it. I really like that movie. Yeah, yeah. But I remember that was the first time where I didn't rush to see a Spider-Man movie. It's like when it came out Fourth of July weekend, I saw Midsummer instead. We're spoiled I'm like, I'm like, for I choice. Huh? We're spoiled for choice when it comes yeah. to these same. But 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 things. I'm saying like because now audiences will just go see something that's safe and IP connected to an IP. Whereas in the 90s, it was different. They're like, oh, Freddy 7. I'm going to go see something else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which yeah. is I totally understand. Yeah. But I think. Wet, and it's not called Nightmare on Elm Street 7 for I know, a purpose. I know, but that's how the public... And they should yeah. look at it like that yeah. because that's the reputation that they had built for themselves from the yes. Nightmare on Elm Street series. But I will say, this is a genuine example of like a slasher film coming out that totally... It surprised me because I, I had heard people said that this one was pretty good. Mm -hmm. And I watched it and I'm like, okay, how can you... How can you go do anything after Freddy's dead. Yes. So like, and I watched it and I was truly surprised. And it, th that's the cool thing. It's West This is Bur kind of like the Creed or Jurassic World for the Nightmare on Elm yeah. Street series. But like the cool thing is, it's a rare example of a director coming back and getting it right. It's which, written which, and directed by Wes Craven. He produced three, but he didn't direct it. Did he help write some of three? I think he did. Okay. He has some. He three was had more an incredible with three. music video by Dokken, Yeah. The heavy metal group. Yes, <laughs> I like the one with the Fat Boys instead. Uh, <laughs> That's four. But yeah, I think but yeah, and also we could also talk about just Freddie Burnout. We have six. Yeah, movies. yeah, there was for the sure. TV show, which I've never seen. There was the music video with the Fat Boys and Vinnie Vincent. Yes, yeah, there, there was a, a lot, lot of, of Freddy. They really whored Freddy out. And yeah. at this point, like, Freddy's Dead was like the swan song for classic Freddy. Sure, and I think that's what the fans were like. This yeah. is the final one. But this one, I think, this truly, it brought that stuff back in a really cool way. I, Dude, if you haven't seen, if you don't give a shit about slasher movies, no. watch this. Like, and with this one, you literally only need to see the first movie in this. Yeah, you don't even. Yeah, good, like they good mentioned point. the sequels. Yeah, and if you're really a big fan, you're gonna get it. But yeah, like, yeah. yeah. I think the choice to make it outside of the continuity and actually just a meta, scary. Hellraiser's done that. Hellraiser Hellworld. Oh, I didn't see that. It was a Lance Henriksen makes a like a video game. Lance based. Henriksen is in a Hellraiser. Movie? This is at that point where he'll just be in anything. Oh, wow. Uh, where he makes a video game based off the Hellraiser movies, and he turns out to just be a murderer. Spoiler, he kills Henry Cavill. Henry Cavill is in a Hellraiser movie? It's an early role for Henry Cavill. So he's, like, killing people, and they're hallucinating the pinhead and whatnot. So it's in the so the twist is he's just a killer. Is it like the D. Snyder movie, where D. Snyder's, like, a uh, murderer? I need to watch that. You know what I'm talking about, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but then, but then, because they were like, "Oh, fans might get mad." At the end, for no reason, Pinhead's in the real world and kills Lance Henriksen. It's not a very good movie, uh, but anyway, I like Hellraiser Five, and that was the one that like everybody's, everybody's Inferno. Yeah, yeah, that was a good movie. Scott Derrickson who did Doctor Strange. He directed that. Yeah, he also directed the oh, wow. uh, Day the Earth Stood Still remake. That sucked. I passed on that. Yes, and I think I made the correct decision. <laughs> uh, but yeah. 
Wes Craven's New Nightmare, a movie that you should definitely get to when you do a certain Nightmare on Elm Street ranking system. I, think I think I shall do that. And you can watch that where, Tony? You can watch that at Hack the Movies. Uh, currently, I have a review. It's an older one uh, for Nightmare on Elm Street 2. And the documentary about Nightmare on Elm Street 2, Scream Queen, My Life Inside or whatever, um, which was actually a really good documentary. I'll check it out. Yeah, check that out. It's about like the actor Mark Patton and how the movie affected him and whatnot. Oh, okay. Uh, and like you see him, like he hates the writer of part two, but then they have like a reconciliation. Oh, okay. it's a good movie. And um, yeah, we talk about a lot of stuff on my channel. Uh, speaking of New Line, we did do. Um, we are making our way through the Friday Thirteenth films every Friday the Thirteenth. I don't know when this comes out, but every Friday the Thirteenth, we review a Friday the Thirteenth. Excellent. We review three Friday the Thirteenth films. Uh, but we um, also did Worst Texas Chainsaw Movie, and we talked about the new line produced uh, Leatherface. I recently rewatched that. I think one of the first three of those films are fine. Yeah. I, I, I mean, obviously, you can't beat the originals. So yeah, yeah. I really like two. Two is great. Two is fun. Two is great. Now, Clayton, the best way to watch three, and I always tell people this. Okay. Patreon.com slash Hack Movies. All right, sure. Uh, we, I have a commentary track for Leatherface Part 3. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, check me out all over there. Download the podcast and uh, do all that fun stuff. And subscribe to Clayton.